So learning check six, which of these are regulated variables? Hopefully you can answer. You may need to know a regulated variable, which you should know this, is a variable that needs to be maintained. So regulated variables are maintained around a set point within homeostatic ranges. A set range via homeostasis. So if you need to modify your answer, that's it, right? Blood pressure is the only one of these that is maintained within a regulated set point. 120 over 80 on average, um, too much out of that range either results in chronically high blood pressure and problems related to that, um, damage to vessels and the heart, or inadequate blood flow to the tissues. The rest of these three are designed to dynam dynamically change in order to meet the body's needs. For example, during exercise. So on that note, let's introduce the control of blood pressure, which is the last topic of this week. It's a big one though. And there's two different aspects to regulation we're gonna talk about. One is central control. So control of MAP, mean arterial pressure. So that's gonna be um, what I'm gonna start with right now. So blood pressure, as you know, is largely influenced by cardiac output. We've already discussed that in a previous video, a uh, previous week actually. We're going to again though, we're gonna review it. And you need to know that because we're gonna use that information. So how is cardiac output altered? Stroke volume and heart rate, right? And we've talked about how the autom autonomic nervous system regulates each of those. One thing that we're gonna add in this week is going to be fluid volume. Fluid volume is not, um, is directly related to stroke volume, right? Without having the volume there, you cannot have that stroke volume. Um, but it's gonna be a separate topic that we'll talk about. So fluid volume is also necessary for maintaining blood pressure. Over on this other side, we've got blood flow regulation. So the regulation of flow via um, both local regulation and central regulation. Now central regulation, this is the one that directly is going to impact MAP. So we're talking about maintaining MAP, central processes do that. What do I mean by central? Autonomic nervous system. Um, we're also gonna have some, some endocrine system as well. So what is this doing, regulating blood flow? Well, right here, we've got the biggest one we'll talk about, vasoconstriction and vasodilation that increase or decrease resistance to change total peripheral resistance. So over on this side, largest way to think about this is total peripheral resistance. Um, you already know vessel size matters. And if you have occlusions, right, that's gonna be a, a factor as well. That's not gonna be dynamically regulated. So the factors that regulate mean arterial pressure are going to be stroke volume, heart rate, which you already know about, fluid volume, and total peripheral resistance. The last one on here, this local regulation, this is the same idea in terms of what happens. So vasoconstriction, vasodilation, um, but it can happen locally at tissues as well. This is also called autoregulation or intrinsic regulation. So the ability of local tissues to regulate their own blood flow. We'll talk about this kind of as a separate topic from central regulation. Um, this autoregulation is kind of a first responder to meeting the demands of tissues. This is intrinsic. It's local. It's all those things, it's the same thing. So when you have a need for a, a change in tissue perfusion, the amount of blood flow into a tissue, autoregulation typically happens first. It's quick, organs regulate their own blood flow. It's like turning on a tap to your house in the kitchen. 
you can just get water right there. Um, but you also need to be considering the whole system, right? If you use all the water up in the kitchen, you're not gonna have water in the bathroom. If you literally like have it on for an hour, I don't care how good your water pressure is. Um, you need to think about the plumbing of the whole house. You need to ensure mean arterial blood pressure by having central control over all of it, even if someone's using the, the kitchen tap. Um, you may think of regulation of blood pressure as some like extreme change, right? Like hemorrhaging, um, chronically high blood pressure, but it's not always that. This is stuff that's happening all the time in your body. Um, local blood flow changes, or you stand up and you have what's called a baroreflector reflex, baroreceptor reflex that keeps you from fainting. So this is stuff that's happening all the time for maintaining drive of flow, blood flow to the tissues. And then we'll talk about short-term and long-term changes. Okay, I've got this overview. I know I showed this before. If you like starting with the big picture, here it is. Um, I'm gonna draw different schematics, different diagrams today, complicated stuff. This is an overview of mean arterial pressure, the things that would increase it. So we're not really looking at the local level here. Um, these are things over here related to TPR and diameter blood vessels. That can be the biggest one we can regulate. We've already touched upon that, right? We're gonna use this information a lot though today. You already know about these two. Increasing each of these increases cardiac output, but now we're gonna look a little bit more at um, the other factors that can trigger that. So barrel receptors, detecting blood pressure, chemoreceptors, which detect um, changes in pH and oxygen levels. And the other big thing that we're adding into this, and it looks like it's a lot new, but a lot of it isn't new. The other big thing that is new is fluid. Um, so blood volume and the regulation of blood volume by the kidneys. So that's gonna be something that is a whole nother um, fun ball game.